Welcome back to the, the next step in our journey of implementing Passport into our Node API. At this stage, if we take a look at this flow diagram that we referenced a few lessons ago, we kind of took note at this like very first stage when a login request for a post comes in, we need to set up this passport.authenticate. We kind of did this in, in a, a weird way, but let's just kind of make sense. We're working in our server, but we've we've set up the verify callback as like a skeleton for now where validation of our user and password is going to happen. So that's kind of the shell of that's been implemented. Now we need to like take a step back and, and implement this passport.authenticate. Let's head on over to our router and we'll go and find that login request that we've made in the previous lessons. I'm going to just copy that and I'm gonna comment this out and we're gonna start rewriting this post request. The first argument into the post method here will be the string for, for login and that's going to reference the, the login route to just make sure I got my slash in there. And I'm just going to open up this function definition here a bit so we've got a bit more space to work with. After the comma, the next part is whatever functions we want to put into that middleware. So we're going to do something slightly different now with the login request. We're going to set up a, a function and we're going to pass in the request, the response. And something a little bit new that we haven't done in any of the other request handlers is make use of the, the next middleware. And we're going to do so in, in this implementation of the, the login handler here. And so in the body of, of the request handler, we're going to now reference the, the passport library and implement that authenticate function. At the top of the file, just go ahead and require in the passport library. And once that's done, then we can make a reference to passport and then we can call this authenticate function. If I invoke it and hover over here, you'll see that it gives you some information. This function is made to authenticate requests as the name implies, and it, it will apply a strategy that we've registered in our index.js. So, so I said we kind of did this backwards, but this is the reason why. This authenticate function needs to reference a, a strategy that we've registered in the middleware of our express server. This authenticate function works in a, in a couple of ways that you can actually set it up. Scroll down here and you'll see different examples. You can reference the string of the, the key of the strategy, which we've called local. And in this example, they've done that too. In this case, uh, there's a function that they pass through here and then you can handle that callback. And then there's other ways of implementing this where you can just like pass in an object with, with different uh, keys on it. And, and so there's simple ways to this, but the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna kind of follow this pattern here in the first example. We can just go ahead and reference the, the local string, which is a reference, remember in our index.js to this strategy that we've referenced here so it's a, a literal connection between the two and then next up it's going to take in a function here and just before we start writing too much code in the function body i'm going to remember that we need to use this a little bit of a different syntax here but because the passport authenticates a higher order function it's going to return a function and so immediately on the return of that function we want to pipe through the request response and next and that's just the kind of syntax to to set this up and the way that we're going to use it in our, our login request handler. Okay, so I'm just going to give us some more space. So the second argument to the authenticate method is this callback function here. And this is going to have a couple of parameters that we can set up. There, there were a couple that we saw in, in the example here. You can see that it, you can set up a, an error, a user info or status. At this point in time, we're only going to be interested in the error and the, the user. And so I'll, I'll pass that in as the arguments into that function. At this stage, before we get too fancy in the function body here, let's just do a simple console log. So we'll make a reference here. This is going to be the passport authenticate. And then I'll just say callback here so that we know exactly what's what's going on. And then I also do want to put an additional console log for us right in the beginning of the request handler. At this stage, let's just say this will be the, the login handler. And maybe let's, let's just reference the request body. Let's stringify that just to kind of see what's coming in from that login request. Okay, so there's not much going on here, but the, the point of what we're trying to do here is trying to create a link between the, the strategy that's been registered in the middleware and the authenticate that's coming in on the request. So we've done the work to wire this up. Let's actually see if we haven't made any issues. We head on over to Postman, make sure our server's running. Um, we're gonna register a user. We can see successfully being registered. We open up a new tab and set up a, a login endpoint. 
Just going to be a simple post with API slash login. I think we've tested this before. If you haven't, just make sure you've got a JSON object. It's a post request. And then once that's set up, you can then hit send. You're going to see that we're going to get a hanging request here because we actually haven't responded in the login since we've changed it. The important thing that I wanted to show you here is if you look in the, the console log, you'll see that there's a couple of console logs here for us to inspect. You can see I've got some, <laughs> some terrible spelling in here. Like I can just fix that in a moment. So at this stage, the, the login came in. This was the first line that came out. You can see we've got a username and password coming in. And then next up, you'll see that it's the, the local strategy verify callback so going back to our index like this is the next line that was referenced what's happening here is that the the passport authenticate function when this gets invoked it references the, the local strategy in the magic of how passport works it then passes that information through to this verify function over here we receive the request we receive the username we receive the password. We've got an option to send through a callback. Once we invoke that callback, either with the error or with the user object here, then it'll return. And so that gets returned to, to this next step in the authenticate here, which receives that callback. And you'll see we get an error here and a user. And if we look at our console here, we'll see that passport.authenticate. So I think what will be useful here is to just add to our console logs and maybe just put numbers on them. So we'll number this one and this one's gonna be three. In addition to numbering it, let's just maybe see what's coming in on that user. So we'll JSON stringify the user and we'll go back to index here and we'll just put a number and this was going to be second in the order of things. And so I'm just going to kill our server and restart to give us some space. Head on over to Postman. Just remember we need to register a user and that's all good. Let's head on over to make a login request and uh, we still get that hanging request, but now we can just see like we've got some numbers here which help us read and see what's going on. And so again, we've got that login handler, the, the local strategy verify callback is then invoked. Whatever we're returning from this done callback then gets received in the login, the passport authenticate in the login function here. And you'll see logging out that user, we get that ID test. Okay, so we've done a, a quite a bit of work. We've kind of connected the two functions that we need to try and understand the flow of how, how things are, are going. So the last thing I wanted to do here was just get rid of that hanging response that we're getting in Postman. So all, all we need to do is below the, the console log here, we're just gonna scaffold some code out here in the function body. Uh, we'll create a conditional to handle the error case. And we'll get to this in a moment. Uh, we'll create another conditional to handle the case if there's no error, but there's no user. And that's another case we need to handle. Just for now, what I want to do is create a response at this stage, which is then going to kind of end the request response cycle. And so we'll say response status, we'll give it a 200 for now, just like create some, some JSON there. We'll create this key called redirect to, and we'll say forward slash profile. This is the, the key bit at like in the, the final version of, of this is when we do get to this stage where we want to be responding with a 200, depending on how you've implemented your front end, you might want to, to have a way to reference like which route that you want to navigate to on the front end once the, the user has been successfully authenticated. So we'll just set that up for now. At this stage, I think all this gives us is a way to end the request response cycle. So let's test it out. Uh, we'll register our user. Then we'll hit send. Uh, you'll see now we get our console logs that we've been inspecting. That's all good. In addition to that, we've got our, our 200 OK. We've got our JSON that's coming through in, in the body of the request. So that's all good. But there's a lot more work here to do. We're not actually doing any validation or anything like that. And obviously, we don't want to be sending back a 200 unless all our checks have passed. So let's pick that up in the, the next lesson. We'll continue on. We've done some good work so far. So I'll see you there. Cheers.